Following the Battle of Forum Valorum on April 14th of the 43 BC year, Aulus Hirtius, the consular commander who had destroyed half of Marcus Antonius's forces using the 4th Macedonica legion he had appropriated from Caesar Octavianus, now wrote to the Senate. Along with a personal accounting of the battle scripted by Servius Sulpicius Galba in a letter to Cicero, the news of Forum Valorum was heralded in Rome. So inspired by the defeat of Antonius was Cicero that he composed the fourteenth of his Philippic speeches, which he delivered to the Senate on April 21, announcing that the consular army had won a decisive victory against Marcus Antonius. But the Senate's victory was not quite as decisive as Cicero had led his coalition of senators to believe. After allowing their men a week's rest to regain strength, Aulus Hirtius and Caesar Octavianus led an all-out assault against the fortifications around Mutina on the very same day that Cicero declared the decisive defeat of Antonius. Hirtius and Octavianus focused the brunt of their attack on a weak area within Antonius's fortifications, where the natural terrain had prevented him from closing the structure more securely. Marcus Antonius reacted swiftly by discharging his cavalry to harass the consular army, while sending word to his remote forces surrounding the town of Mutina. But those legions were too far away to offer immediate assistance. So, as support for his cavalry, Antonius brought out two of his legions to confront the senatorial army. Caesar Octavianus turned his forces to engage Antonius's two legions, while the consul Aulus Hirtius continued to hammer away at the vulnerable points within the fortifications. Inside the town of Mutina, the propraetor Decimus Junius Brutus, hearing that battle had commenced, rallied his own legions, placing them under the command of his legate, also one of Caesar's assassins, Pontius Aquila. Opening the gates, Aquila led an attack against Antony's remote forces to prevent them from rushing to their commander's aid. Eventually, the Legio IV Macedonica, under the command of Aulus Hirtius, reached Antony's fortifications and poured into his camp, as legions under Caesar Octavianus enjoyed victory over those forces sent out by Marcus Antonius. Aulus Hirtius directed his men to begin fighting their way towards the command tent between Antonius's circumvallation and contravallation. But Marcus Antonius was boldly defended by his fifth legion, who fought so savagely that men were falling on both sides. Caesar Octavianus, having successfully routed the opposing legions he faced, turned his forces and headed into the fortification breach. Driving his legions through the ruthless fighting and chaos, Octavianus was battling his way to the front lines at approximately the same time the consul, Aulus Hirtius, fell dead. We are told by some sources that Caesar Octavianus ordered his men to kill Aulus Hirtius during the confusion of battle, possibly as revenge for having taken from him the Legios Martia and 4th Macedonica. Other sources claim Hirtius died naturally in battle, and Caesar Octavianus valiantly fought his way to the front lines in order to rescue the consul's corpse. Neither version alters the truth that Aulus Hirtius died fighting the men of Marcus Antonius's 5th legion, who prevailed in preventing the consular army from reaching Antonius's command tent. And unable to progress any further in the tight space between siege walls, Caesar Octavianus ordered a retreat. On the opposite side of the town, Antonius's remote legions met with success as they pushed back the advancing army of Decimus Junius Brutus. Decimus Brutus's legate, Pontius Aquila, also died during the battle, becoming the second casualty among those who had assassinated Julius Caesar. Although Marcus Antonius had managed to fend off the consular army's attack, his losses were too great to maintain the siege of Mutina. Sometime after midnight, in the still dark hours of early April 22, Marcus Antonius retreated, creeping quietly out of Mutina and heading in the direction of Piscina. There, he planned to join forces with Publius Ventidius, another Caesarian who had raised three legions for Antonius, but had been blocked from bringing them to Mutina by the consul's marching armies. On the same day Roman men were killing one another in Cisalpine Gaul, Cicero, the father of the Republic read his 14th Philippic speech to the Senate in Rome, glorifying the consular victory of the previous week. 
accompanied by assurances to the conscript fathers that Vibius Panzer, who had been injured during the fighting at Forum Galorum on April 14th, was on the road to recovery. Cicero lionized the deeds of both consuls, Hirtius and Panzer, for their supremacy over Marcus Antonius while downplaying any contribution made by Caesar Octavianus to the consular victory. Cicero urged the Senate to declare a fifty-day period of public thanksgiving in honor of Aulus Hirtius and Vibius Panzer. On the 23rd of April, while leading all his legions, including the 4th Macedonica, back down the Via Emilia, Caesar Octavianus paid a visit to Vibius Panzer, who was still recovering from his battle injuries. After a lengthy meeting, which took place in private, Vibius Panzer suddenly died. Caesar Octavianus then declared that, during their private meeting, Panzer had admitted that he had always supported Caesar Octavianus as the new leader of the Caesarian party, which he then confirmed by awarding Octavianus command of all his legions, the new recruits as well as the Martial Legion, which had taken refuge in Panzer's camp following the Battle of Forum Valorum. After Panzer's death, his physician, Glyco, was arrested on suspicion of poisoning, though his detainment was brief. As if learning that Cicero, his supposed ally, had made little mention of him during his 14th Philippic oration wasn't bad enough, Caesar Octavianus then received new orders from the Senate. With both of Rome's consuls dead, a new commander was needed to lead the consular legions. On the advisement of Cicero, the Senate granted the proconsul of Cisalpine Gaul, Decimus Junius Brutus, the command of all consular legions. Outraged by Cicero's duplicity, and yet another attempt to strip him of his devoted legions, Caesar Octavianus refused to turn his men over to Decimus Junius Brutus, citing as justification that his legions would not follow one of Caesar's assassins. When ordered to use his legions to prevent Marcus Antonius from joining his remaining forces with those of Publius Ventidius in Picenum, Caesar Octavianus again refused and allowed Antonius to reach his destination. It seems likely that at this point Caesar Octavianus recognized he had been used by both Cicero and the Senate to help build an army for their liberators. By urging governors and client kings to support them, Cicero had already strengthened the positions of Brutus and Cassius in the east. And now the father of the Republic was endeavoring to strengthen another so-called liberator with his manipulative tactics, stripping Caesar Octavianus of his legions and delivering them into the arms of Decimus Brutus. By fighting amongst themselves, the Caesarians had all played right into Cicero's hands. From his own command tent, Caesar Octavianus now sat down and wrote letters to the other Caesarian commanders, Marcus Aemilius Lepidus Pontifex Maximus, Gaius Asinius Pollio, Lucius Munatius Plancus, and even Marcus Antonius. Despite his personal animosity towards some, the son of Caesar made the case that divided, the Caesarians had no hope of surviving the machinations of Cicero and the liberators. It was now time to work together.